In this video, I'm going to show you how I went from this to this. All with the help of technical batting specialist coach, Gary Palmer. Let's go. Gary, yep. you've never seen me back before. I'm okay. going in there. What are you going to be looking for? Well, I just want to put a few balls in the machine, say 20, 25 balls, and just assess how clean you're hitting it. Does it hit the middle of the bat? Is it going exactly where you want it to go? How much control do you have over what you're trying to do? And while I'm putting those balls in, I'll be digesting all the different moving parts of your body and trying to pick up any faults that I may see during that process. The more mistakes you make, the better, because we can find the solutions, therefore we can improve you and make you a better player. So I don't want you to feel under pressure, I just want you to hit the ball as you normally would, make sure they're all attacking shots, and then let's, let's go from there. Have some fun, looking forward right. to it. So what I'm going to do now to help Neil with his alignment balance is to put him in what I call the set position. That means the position he's going to be in just before he makes contact with the ball. So this isn't a stance, this is a set position. So both laces down the wicket. So what I'm going to try and get Neil to do here is in the set position, he lets the ball come, lets the ball come, hits it and then moves forward afterwards. So set position, let the ball come, hit it, pull forward, hold the shape. And this is all about getting your head a long way forward and letting the ball come to you, but making contact out in front of the pad so the top hand is dominant. The key for this is that back foot, the laces of that back foot need to be dead straight. The minute he turns his back foot slightly sideways, he's going to tip this way. Bear in mind the ball's swinging into him from right arm over around the wicket. If those laces are straight and that front shoulder is out of the way, he's nicely aligned to get good access to the ball. If he turns his front shoulder and that back foot goes more sideways, it's like a steering rack on a car. He's going to, he's going to be closed off, he's going to find it difficult to do. So let's try that drill. Right, this time, and this is specific for you, I'm trying to get you to wait for the ball. Lift your back leg up and then hit the ball. Yeah? So that front leg can't move. But when you lift it up, then lift it behind you there. Lift it up so the sole's pretty much in line with the stumps. You ready? Yeah. Right, so you've just been working on uh, a drill which I put, I put you in a set position and then try to get you to lift your leg up behind you before you make contact with the ball. The good things that come out of that drill is that you have to get your head forward and your chest forward which opens you up and gets you perfectly balanced and aligned. The ball actually 
is under my eyes, which is great. Sometimes, you know, you can still hit a great shot further in front of you and it's not quite gonna be under your eyes, but ideally, it's under my eyes. I'm leaning in. And the more I hit the ball out in front of me, the more my top hand, it, 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 it suits my top hand being dominant. And to play straight well, it's all about a dominant top hand and a nice relaxed fingers and thumb bottom hand. And if I'm hitting out in front, leaning in, I'm, and I keep holding my shape, I've got a really big hitting zone. And if I want to flick that off my legs and, I, and I'm leaning in, I can also do that from a nice balanced and aligned position. If I try to put my foot by the side of the ball, my head is back, my hitting zone goes from that to that, and the later you hit the ball, or you make contact with the ball back beyond that foot, it's more about the bottom hand doing all the work. And when the bottom hand's doing all the work, we don't get to hold the shape of the shot for long enough, and the hitting zone gets smaller. So out in front, let the ball come, let it come, let it come, let it come. Make contact in front, hold the shape. It's all very well talking about letting the ball come, but we don't want to let the ball come so much that the contact point becomes late back here, because again, the bottom hand comes into play. We're playing behind the pad. The ball could go down through gully, or the slip area, and if the ball nips back, I don't get access to it. If I'm out in front and it moves, I can negate the movement as I could the swing. So it's really important to, yes, let the ball come, but keep the contact out in front of you when you're hitting in the V, straight. Right, we need to reload, I'm out of ammo. So just question for you, that last shot you hit, what drill that we've just done so far would have improved that last shot? So straight away, yeah. you've rubbed what's happened here, and that's the right answer, isn't it? Yeah, definitely everything you're saying is definitely computing in my head and kind of piecing, my, you know, piecing it together in my mind so yeah. that um, you know, I'm able to adapt. Yeah. So kind of your philosophy and what you're, what you're saying is actually working. Like I'd like to think I'm giving you uh, step by step all the mechanics of what yeah. you need to do and an understanding of those mechanics to play a straight drive or an on drive. Yeah. So that's really good. Okay, so you're now in that set position. We've done the one-legged drill now, we, uh, and we've done the step and lift the leg up. Now we're on to the step let the ball come, play the shot, and then just shuffle forward afterwards, twice like that, holding the shape, getting the feel for it. But just a couple of little things I've noticed that you could uh, you have to work on. Sometimes you're getting a little bit there, and that's resulting in this going out here to compensate, and this coming in, okay? If you can keep here, it's easier to put your feet in a tighter line with your laces down the wicket, Thus keep the ball out in front of you, and keep your top hand dominant. So the only little thing is we're just getting a bit of this, which is causing that, that. So we want to go more chest bone, head, out in front. As soon as this opens, this back lift stays out there. Loads and loads of players pick the ball back in the right place initially, and as they go again, it can go behind them. And once it does that, your alignment's out and you're playing across a lot of balls. It's quite important on that second back to keep it out here. So from there, you play it on drive, pretty much back swings in a straight line. Straight drive, you don't have to adjust it much. That sort of stump, you could leave it. But if you are looking for the off drive, when that shoulder turns, that's either your cue to leave it or it's getting you in position to hit an off drive. But again, when you want to hit the off drive, my laces are pointing where I'm hitting the ball. That's the most natural, the most obvious thing to do. Keeping them sideways, I just, it's 
some people think there are different ways of doing it. Personally, I would say that's that's a fault, and therefore, if, as a coach, if you can see that as a fault, then you'll look to make a positive correction. But if you see that as another way of doing it, then a batter may miss it, keep a number of balls. And the question is, do you leave it at that, or do you go, let's do this? If you're hitting every ball out the middle of the bat with your foot at that angle, and hitting exactly where you want to go, and in total control of what you're doing, that's fine. But in my experience of watching people in here, and some of the players and players that have been in here are high class players, if this gets too sideways, they don't hit the ball as well as when they get their foot like that. And it just seems pretty much all the time. Getting into this position, more consistent, less consistent. More consistent, less consistent. <laughs>
they want to be slightly open. Theirs with particular issues, tipping to the offside and getting their leg too far across, they might stand even more open just to counter that. Depends on the in <coughs> individual player. But there are very different variants of open, slightly open, really open. Some people stand like this and just before the ball's bowled, they come round to there. If you stood like this, again, you it's encouraged, you're encouraged to go that way. So getting this out of the way, <coughs> excuse me, helps to give you good alignment and balance to hit straight. And this is the position I believe you should be in to hit straight. That means back foot laces down the wicket. The minute I turn this and this, I go that way. So if we're trying to get into that position, it makes sense that you stand slightly open in your stance. So it makes it easier to get into that position. From very sideways on, you've got a long way to go and this could happen. So there's just a few pointers there that um, hope help you. Thank you to Gary for this awesome training day, a session which involved three key elements, clarity of technique, repetition and specific drilling a proven formula which helped me as a player buy into his philosophy tapping into all the information fed to me at the start by gary to almost being able to recognize the faults i was making by myself in the end be sure to get in touch with him with all your specific coaching requirements links in the description below and i'll see you in the next video